can I introduce Mr. Ron Lawson, who is going to give us a talk tonight on Vox. It's a privilege to have Ron here because when I was working on the pub and we were renovating it, Ron came down and supplied me with loads of information on the pubs of the East End and he's been a, a driving force behind the force head getting to know. Ron, over to you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm going to try and do without that. I can move around a lot easier. What did you say? Big call me. Right. Now my interest in the pubs it's not just because of the amber nectar, which is nice. Um, I was a magistrate for 17 years, and 10 of those years I was on the licensing committee for Sunderland. So of course I knew everything that went on with the pubs in the, in the town, I still call it the town. Um, at court, there were great big ledgers there big leather-bound ones going back to 1872 which recorded every pub, every licensee, the date they started, everything like that and I copied them uh, and of course I've got them with me uh, not the, the ledgers, I've got copies of the, the information these themselves first it's about Vaux now not only was it an excellent local employer, excellent beer as well, as Tony said he's got uh, double maximum, which, there was a story to that, it was created by Vaux themselves to celebrate the return of Colonel Vaux with his maximum machine gun platoon that he had in South Africa in the Boer War. He got quite a lot of awards um, the machine gun itself was invented by Hiram Maxim, who was an American, but there's more of that on show here. One of our members, that when I say our members, of the Sunderland Antiquarian Society, Morris Dobson, he collected everything. You mentioned he collected everything from pencils to machine guns. <laughs> uh, and he was able to buy a deactivated a uh, Hiram Maxim machine gun, which I'll show you one here. The other interest with folks, <coughs> when I first started work, a week after my 15th birthday, I started work with Noble Volks. Nothing whatsoever to do with the brewery. He was a cousin. He was a consulting engineer. And I started there as an apprentice draftsman in 1948 at the grand sum of 17 and sixpence a week. I got a half dollar and my mum got the other 15 bob. <laughs> um, that was the going rate of an apprentice draftsman in 1948, 17 and sixpence. Anyway, you'll see all of this as I go on. Now, I don't know what it's going to be like for life. Can everyone see the yeah. screen? Can everyone hear me? Yeah. I'll be shifting. I'm going to be over there. Now, I think you've had time to read that. As I say, Vaux themselves ended up as the second largest independent brewer in the country. They bought breweries all over the place. Uh, the likes of Robinson's at Houghton, Lambs at Hetton, uh, Border Breweries, uh, Coldstream. They, they literally bought dozens of breweries all over. The reason, of course, is you had these breweries, the practice before, I would say, 1880, was for the pub to brew its own beer. Along came refrigeration, which meant that the beer could travel a lot better. Um, it was normal practice to brew in the cooler months. Summer months the beer didn't travel very well. Now, there's, people talk of 
ale and beer. The difference being one's brewed with hops and one's brewed without. But now they're all brewed with hops. I'd like to acknowledge who has helped me with, uh, with this sort of work. And there it is. That is the family crest. That's still not right. Um, supposedly from the old uh, French plural of Val or Valley. The old members of the family. The one in the top left hand corner of course is Cuthbert Fawkes who started it all off. Now the Colonel Edwin Fawkes lived at Harrington Hall which is just a stone's throw from where I live. The only thing that's left of it are the steps at the front. There are five steps. You can see at the left hand side in front of the hall they're the only thing that's left. It was demolished in 1957. <clears throat> Give me time to read that. It's not all reading and writing, but uh, there's a lot more to it than that. Just there explained at the beginning. Not as money went with money. Yeah, I was just thinking about it. <laughs> uh, into the Doxford family. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. What I would like to have known was what these colourful historical novels were. <laughs> That's Major Ernest Fawkes. Yeah. And that was what he did. And who he married. Again, you see, where, where is it? <coughs> yeah, he married Emily Eve Lellum Ord, who was a daughter of Henry Moon Ord, another ship owner. I'd like to keep the money. Now, that looks rather rough, but the photographer, whoever it was, took this after they cut rather big grass and it looks a bit rough there. 1927 Vaux Brewery itself amalgamated with North East Breweries who had their brewery in Railway Row. I don't know whether you know where, that is, where the new fire station is. The first chairman was this one here from Murray's at Concert. And then that's Sir Frank Nicholson. He married Amy Vaux, so of course the Vaux blood is still flowing. That was his son Douglas, the father of the present Sir Paul and his brother Frank. He is brilliant. There were about 600 workers at the brewery. And he knew the name of every one of them. <coughs> this is amusing. You've got two of the directors of Vault, but see the girls at the left hand side picking around the bottles. <laughs> I obtained a great many 35mm slides, cleaned them all up, but many of them I don't know who they are, so it's an ongoing job this. Frank Nicholson has supplied me with a lot of names. Now that's the, he's the guy in the front row right in the centre, he was the uh, manager of the bottling department. <coughs> Excuse me, I think Sorry. the one before you've just shown is... Uh, Sorry, what? I think the one before this one is Lamb's Brewery. I've got that photograph with my father on. Ah, right. Also, one of the one before, I think... Now, that one there, it's uh, a lot of the stuff, 
but the ones on the two outside with the staves, you can see they were Coopers because they've got the, the curved staves from the barrels. That's a good one, all flat caps. And dumb. The guy in the centre looks like he was a foreman. I don't think I'd like to argue with him. Now I hope his knees were all right, but he's uh, <laughs> he's supporting a bit weight there. Still got a top of his boat. <laughs> These gentlemen were all of the Gold Watch Club, all doing 40 years service, and for which, of course, they got the Gold Watch. You can just see, see Sir Frank. And this again is Colonel Vaux and the platoon he had with him in the Boer War. The one at the right hand side looked like he could have on himself. <laughs> Very early ones showing the steam wagons that they had, 1903. Before they moved into Castle Street, where the brewery was, they had it in Union Street. This was the area where the railway station was built. They sold the land there and moved to Castle Street and the railway station was built there. <coughs> in Union Street. This is just a, a noise map of the town centre. Uh, left of centre you'll see a slightly pink area, that's where the brewery was. In Union Street. Another early view in the Lording Bay. A steam wagon. These things were amazing. Solid rubber tyres. Must have been a rough ride. <laughs> this I took. There's three photographs here coming up. I was puzzled about round about centre. There was a pillar, and it looked like it was part of a chapel. Left of centre there you can see a pillar. And carved into it is 1900. I've still not been able to find out exactly what that was. The amalgamation with North Eastern Breweries in 1927. It wasn't a takeover, it was purely an amalgamation. This one I put in because um, it was one of North East Brewery's pubs in Middlesbrough. But look at the attitude of the sergeant on the left hand side. Somebody was in for it. Come this Christmas, don't they? A five ton steam truck, again with solid rubber tyres. I like when it says it's loaded with 260 dozen pints. And two spare bottles in the bunker. I know they were for. And that was a North East Brewery steam wagon. It must have rolled the beer around a bit with these solid tyres. The bottling hall, the um, manager you can see right in the centre. Early transport. And after the Second World War, we've got a lot of uh, ex army trucks. A tanker at uh, Pennywell Comrades Club. Of <laughs> course, uh, there were quite a lot of greys. The early greys had steel tyres on the, the wheels and then eventually they went over to pneumatic ones. Yeah. 
before 1999 when the brewery closed. That was a, an ex-employee who bought a truck and did it up uh, like this, and he brought it along to show me, and that's outside my front door. Got some um, aerial views here. Now, you see that funny shape there, it's sort of an island. Just left of that, right up against the edge, is the London Derry. In front of that thing is the Magistrates Court, and to the right is all the area that was covered by Vaux. Again an aerial view there, a Vaux site. You can see the river at the right hand side. That is the Trimden Street area. The bottom right hand corner, a single building by itself is the King's Arms. Then moving over to the left hand side, there's a track going, doing a curve. A little bridge there, that's Gilbridge. A riverside view, the chimney with Vaux on. Now this one and the next one were cottages that were used by the staff but were demolished to make way for a big warehouse. This was the start of it. It was a huge thing. And then you got this. One and a third million pounds <laughs> of beer. It was a domino effect. That one pallet gave way at one end and sent everything out the wall at the far end. They had to put a fence up. You can see it on the right hand side of each one. To stop people pinching their cans. <laughs> Me dad did. I got caught for that. Then there's a few advertising um, slogans here. Good cheer, good beer, right here. That was the original uh, double ma the maxim. The same. Yes, that was the, the maxim machine gun. Work it out. It was brought out in, on occasion for the return from the Boer War of Colonel Vaux. When it was brought out, it was 10% alcoholic content. And the publicans were complaining the customers were falling asleep at the bar. <laughs> and that was called Maxim. So they halved the alcoholic content down to 5% and called it double Maxim. Work that one out. <laughs> Something and delightful. That's it there. That was the one, it, it was owned by Morris Dobson. I knew him well and I went along to his house and photographed this. Notice it's deactivated. Uh, that was the sign that uh, for the double maxim pull on just off the Durham Road. North That's it, yeah. <coughs> now this is a, a document going back to 1914 for the First World War. Without reading all of it, basically soldiers were only permitted to drink from 12.30 to 1.30 and from 6pm to 8pm. If you were caught drinking out of that time you could be arrested without warrant. When you want good beer, make the B-side. <laughs> Samson and various other drinks that they made. Anonymous, actually. Anonymous, yes. I like that one. Southern is still thick Scotch means whiskey. <laughs> Mild and pale, Sunland draft. This is a one that was specially made for the American market. You see on a traditional English ale, and um, it has that it's, it's made by Vaux with the address on. But that was purely for the American market. 
and obviously Washington, we're being so close to Washington Hall and their affiliation with Washington. Now he's some uh, suggestive digestive, this one. I have a liking for a Viking. <laughs> Don't get fast, get frisky. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, I, I feel like a frisky. Don't tell me all sorts of. And these are the, the things, the souvenirs you could buy. I don't know about her. <laughs> then the soft drinks that they made. Ice cream, yeah. Now, what? to the making of the beer. Start with the, the barley and the hops. Now I would have thought that most hops came from Kent. When you look at the uh, writing on the sacks there, it's Yugoslavia. Then the skill job of a, a cooper. I don't think there are many left now in this country. But this shows the making of a barrel. The, these 35mm slides showing these, I was lucky. I think I said that the, <coughs> when Volks closed, they had a, a security man on the gate. And for a packet of fags, you could get anything. <laughs> so naturally I gave him a pack of fags and I went into the officers and in one of the officers there were a great pile of 35mm slides. I got a black bin liner and a shovel and just shoveled them in and spent many months cleaning them up and most of the work on here is from there. You can see all the staves numbered. And this was in the Edinburgh brewery. And the laddie on the far right is the last apprentice cooper taken on. This is the account section. Now there's one of our members, hasn't long been there, but a few months. And she's in every week looking at the Sunderland Echoes. And I was showing this, the lady on the front at the left, and she said, eee, that's me. <laughs> she'd worked at Vaux for 21 years in the accounts. So of course she was able to supply all the names. Canning plant. Just enjoying the... A little bit of the beverage. Alan Simpson was the one that used to take visitors around. The one, there's Frank Nicholson there, sender, and the lady to the right of him is Barbara Simpson, Alan Simpson's wife. She helped me with some photographs. That's Peter Reid in the uh, the bar. He yeah, must have a drop more. <laughs> yeah, the launch of um, of draft double maximum. <coughs> That's Alan and his wife Barbara with Frank. Sir Paul with Alan and Frank. I mean, with Alan and Barbara. Getting your names mixed up. Now I shoved this one in because the guy in the uniform is the log lieutenant of the county and next to him to the right is a, a I can't remember her name now. And the next one is myself. <laughs> Miss Wilson. Miss Wilson is the one next to Pardon? Miss Wilson. Oh, oh the small one. Oh, yeah. look at the... Oh, I know her well as well. 
I'm just recovering from a dose of flu, which I'm forgetting everything. <laughs> that is another one of uh, new magistrates. Barbara Simpson is the second from the left, and then the one to the right of the Lord Lieutenant also worked for Hawks. The mayor then was um, Ross. Uh, yes. well, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> I've got a property here. Good. <laughs> An old bill from a letterhead from uh, Vaux, 1927. That was where they did the most of their work, the sign boards, everything like that. Church Street, just across the road here. Now the guy left of centre is Douglas Nicholson. <coughs> he loved his horses. Tommy Sharman, the farrier. And you can see the steel wheels of the uh, the dray on that one. Outside the, the grey horse at Bolton. Again, steel wheels. Now, I knew this guy, um, Bob Mutton. Always, everybody called him shy, and I never found out why. Because he certainly wasn't. Steve Brown. Eddie Mahoney. Oh, you can see the pneumatic tyres on the, the drays now. A couple of drays in Vine Place. And these are the Percherons. They used to take them down to the Weybridge in Low Row. Each of those horses weighed over a ton. Not the sort of thing you want to fall in on, do you? Now this, I've only got the newspaper report for it. I haven't got hold of the photographs properly yet. But one of their dray horses collapsed in Chester Road. It was rescued by the fire brigade and recovered. That's when you all go, oh. <laughs> Look at that hairstyle of the one, the tallest at the back. <laughs> the Vox Board, the Brewery Council, the back of right at the front centre here is Frank Nicholson. His wedding to Lavinia. That's at the top of uh, Silks and Roll. Used to be old British Road Services Depot. Vaux took it over. And if you'll forgive the pun, the yellow buses were known as banana buses. And um, you'd wait ages for them. They'd come along in bunches. <laughs> Support all sorts of sports. This is a big mural that was in a mural. Mural. I haven't had enough yet. Uh, it was in the office. It was too wide. I couldn't get far enough back to get the whole lot in, so I took it in two parts. It was all it was painted. Every pub that was in Sunderland. Belonging to Vaux, of course. And then 
was frightened of myself. They went into hotels and it just shows the type of hotel they, they had. On the last day, I was able to take these from the upper stories of the Magistrates Court uh, as they were demolishing this. These are memorial stones that are either in Bishop Wimmer Cemetery or uh, outside the Minster. One of them is just used for walking on. <laughs> the building at the right, you can see the star RTV. That's RT Vaux, that's the one that I, the son of, that I work for. <coughs> Normal Vaux. He was an officer in the Royal Artillery in the First World War. That's him. He was a right old so and so, but I learned a lot. What you see on there is here. It's his ceremonial sword from the First World War. I'm five foot ten, he was six foot two. And consequently, you can see there, if I put this here, I can't draw it. It was the material of me. And Quite a dangerous weapon. But the story behind that, I was raking about in the attics of where we had the office, and I saw these with his spurs, everything like that. And I said, Would he sell them? And he quoted a price I couldn't afford. So he nicked them. Two or three years later. <laughs> Two or three years later, he comes, and you always just got your second name. Lawson. I thought, oh, what have I done wrong now? Um, come on. You were interested in these, didn't you? And he gave them to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's beautifully engraved. One side has George V on, and the other side, uh, Royal Artillery. Yes, that's... Uh, this, the gravestone of the the fox that I knew. Begin a bit over the side. <coughs> to the left, the green one is St Mary's Church. This is Bridge Street that you can see there. Yeah. Opposite that is the Grand Hotel. Now. You may just see it, running across the back lane from the back of the Grand Hotel is a walkway which was at uh, first floor level. They had a, an annex that ran into Bedford Street. When they were full they used to shove the people into the annex. And opposite that is a big yellow square which was the premises that was owned by Noble Volks but it was let off to William Jackson who owned the Grand Hotel uh, and was used as a bottling plant. 
And this is the one, left hand side, uh, articulated what I'm going to do over turn. Outside the garage that was next door to where I worked. Over at the right hand side, um, about three quarters of wheel, and it's just a shot, you can see the walkway that had been put in between the Grand Hotel and the Annex. In Bedford Street, of course, was Bourbon Brothers, who used to have that big circle of elephant hide. Elephant hide. <laughs> and that's it for the moment. Pretty good hide. Thank you, Gulag.